Nicanor Pera, a Chilean poet whose use of direct, colloquial, and playful language, often for ironic and comic effect, pioneered the literary movement that became known as anti-poetry, died on Tuesday in Santiago, Chile. He was 103. The death was announced by President Michelle Bachelet, who called Mr. Para a singular voice in Western culture. An accomplished mathematician and physicist, Mr. Para rose to fame in 1954 with the publication of his Poems and Anti Poems, which used lucid language to evoke the humor and absurdity of modern life. He filled his poems with cliche and even slang reflecting his interest in everyday speech as an expressive and descriptive medium. He used emotionally incongruent language much of it humorous, irreverent, or banal to underscore the tragic nature of many of his compositions. Common objects like phones, soda fountains and park benches were sprinkled throughout his verse Laughter and Tears was the way he described the technique of anti-poetry a movement that was in part a response to the conventional notion of poetry as a form of elevated expression for elite readers, as found in the verse of his friend Pablo Neruda I always associated poetry with the voice of a priest in the pulpit, he once said, adding that poets sang while people talked. Let the birds do the singing. He told the New York Times in an interview in 1968, when there is humor, irony, sarcasm, when the author is making fun of himself and so of humanity, then the author is not singing but telling a story that is an anti-poem. Regarding his relationship to the reader, he once said, humor makes contact easier. Remember that it's when you lose your sense of humor that you begin to reach for your pistol. The ready accessibility of his verse is reflected in a 1972 poem, Help, here translated in its entirety by the Arkansas poet Miller Williams I don't know how I got here I was running along happy as you please a Eddie hat in my right hand chasing a phosphorescent butterfly who drove me crazy with joy and suddenly zap. I trip petty don't know what's happened to the garden the whole thing went to pieces my nose and my mouth are bleeding. Honestly I don't know what's going on either give me some help or a bullet in the head. Matthias Rivas, director of publications at Diego Portales University in Santiago, said Mr. Para had tried to excise the flourishes and excessive wordiness of Latin American literature in favor of a frank poetry that gave voice to the popular classes. He wanted, Mr. Rivas said, to lower the poets from Olympus. Nicanor Segundo Para Sandoval was born on September 15, 1914, in San Fabian de Alaco, in southern Chile, one of nine children of Nicanor Para, a schoolteacher and musician, and Rosa Clarissa Sandoval Navaretti, a dressmaker. The couple emphasized culture, and several of their children became respected artists, notably the folk singer Violeta Para, who committed suicide in 1967. Mr. Para published his first book, Singer Without a Name a year before he graduated from the University of Chile in 1938, with degrees in mathematics and physics. He later studied mechanics at Brown University in Providence, R.I., and cosmology at the University of Oxford in England. He taught theoretical physics at the University of Chile for decades. I do physics in order to earn my living, and I do poetry in order to keep alive he told the Times in 1968. In 1963, he spent six months in the Soviet Union translating the work of several Soviet poets into Spanish, but he declined to join the Communist Party. For a time he was a darling of leftists in the United States though not in Chile, as he related in 1971, when he attended a birthday party for Bobby Seale. The Black Panther leader. Introduced by Jerry Rubin, the radical activist, as Chile's best poet, 
Mr. Para, then 57, said he was viewed with suspicion by many communists in Chile because of an episode in Washington in 1970 I and some other foreign poets read at the Library of Congress, he recalled. Afterward, we were taken to a reception at the White House and, before I knew it, I was shaking hands with Mrs. Nixon. Photographs of that appeared all over Latin America, and suddenly my old friends were very cold. I had to cancel a trip to Cuba. It is still very embarrassing. Reviewing Mr. Para's emergency poems in 1972, the scholar Alexander Coleman wrote that Mr. Para and the other anti-poets dread the very idea of poetry and its attendant metaphors, inflated diction, romantic yearning, obscurity, and empty nobility. His work was not to everyone's taste. One Chilean critic found the poems too dirty to be immoral. Another reacted with pity and nausea. In the early 1970s, he grew disillusioned with Chile's socialist president, Salvador Allende, the target of the short stories and poems Mr. Para published under the title Artifacts, 1972. The next year, Mr. Allende committed suicide as he was being overthrown in a military coup. Many leftists and artists fled, but not Mr. Para, who retained his teaching position. His nephew Angel Para, a celebrated singer-songwriter and the son of Violeta Para, denounced his uncle, telling the Times, I want nothing from that man. Among those who distanced themselves from Mr. Para was Neruda, who was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1971 and died suspiciously in 1973. A short time after the coup Pablo always stood on a platform and his position was clear, but with Nicanor you never know, one of Neruda's friends told the literary scholar and biographer Frank Max Hain for an article in the Times in 1976. Mr. Max Hain said the contrast between the poets Neruda the communist and Para the skeptic was suggested. By their houses in the seaside village of Isla Negra, on the Chilean coast, Neruda's mansion began as a stone house with a tower and was later extended along the bluff, while Mr. Para's humble cottage was a few hundred yards inland, in a clump of pine trees none of the grandeur and sweep of Neruda is found in Para's house, Mr. Max Hain wrote. It reflects a writer with quite a different stance a poet with modest but precise doubts and a laconic sense of humor. He added, at heart Para is an anarchist, a kind of exile from all society, including that of his own country. Some of the poems in Mr. Para's 1977 collection, The Sermons and Teachings of the Christ of Elki, took aim at the human rights abuses carried out by the rightist regime of Gen. Augusto Pinochet. Shortly before the 1988 plebiscite that ended military rule and restored democracy in Chile, Mr. Para was quoted in the Times as saying, We can write as we want, since the system pays no attention to our ordinary poetry. They know that nobody reads it. Mr. Para was awarded Chile's National Literary Prize in 1969 and the Cervantes Prize the most prestigious literary award in the Spanish-speaking world, in 2011. He was given a Guggenheim Fellowship in 1972. Mr. Paris spent his last years in Las Cruces, a small town on a bay near the Pacific Ocean, before returning to his family home in the La Reina section of Santiago. His marriages to Inga Paman and Nuri Taka ended in divorce. His survivors include six children, Catalina, Ana Francisca, and Alberto, from a relationship with Ana Delia Troncoso, a son, Roberto, from a relationship with Rosita Munoz, who had been his housekeeper, and two children, Colombina and Juan de Dios, from his marriage to Ms. Taka, a painter.